ओके हेलो स्टार्ट Okay, now we come to the next topic. That is uh, non-relational database. Now we saw just now that using SQL, which is a relational database, we are able to query the records and so on. now we'll see what are the non relational databases and how the data relate to the non relational databases it is stored in relational database the data is basically what organized in a table structure and it is managed by sql but then a lot of applications are there who don't make use of relational database and they rely on non relational databases non relational storage which is called as no sql also so here we have got an azure storage service which offers a range of options for storing the data in the cloud so let us see what is azure storage services are the different ways of storing the data in the cloud now we have got here what is called azure blob storage it is a service that enable us to store massive amount of unstructured data as binary objects that's why it is called as blobs binary large objects so we are not talking of a record a table customer table a products table it can be any unstructured data and what is unstructured data we saw they are videos they are documents anything so that information is basically stored in the format of blobs and these blobs are basically optimized for the storage purpose on the cloud and whatever applications are there whether it is a dotnet application or java application can read and write the blobs by using the apis so we have got the blob apis which you have to use in the calling programs so if you are doing dotnet so you have to use the blob api if you are doing java you have to use the blob apis so in this what we do here is we create what is called as containers in these containers we store the data as containers we store the data so you can store the data in the container in the format of uh, folders hierarchy of folders like how we create the folders on our machine so it is stored in the format of containers and that is how a storage is used
So let us understand what is a blob and how it is stored there. Now, Azure Blob Storage supports three different types of blobs: block blobs, page blobs, and append blobs. A block blob is a set of blocks. Each block may vary in size up to 400 MIB. Block blob can contain up to 197, 190.7 TIB, giving maximum size of 500 MB. The block is the smallest amount of data that can be read or written. On an individual unit, so that is a block. Then we have got what is called as a page blobs. So a page blob is an organized as a collection of fixed size 512 bytes pages. So it is used for random read and write operations. And a page block can. Hold data of approximately eight TB of data. So Azure itself uses page blobs to implement virtual storage for virtual machines. I mean, Azure uses this concept internally also. It's not that as a user you have to use it, but Azure also uses this concept internally for storing virtual disk for virtual machines. Of course, we saw what is a virtual machine. So, when you're creating a virtual machine, you also have to define what, how many uh, disk space it should have. The virtual machine should have how much size of the disk. So that is how it is using this concept there also. An append blob is a block optimized for appending. Operations. So we can add only blocks to the end append block, update them, or delete an existing blob, and so on. So these are the different ways, types of blob storage in Azure. You got block, page, and append. Then blob storage provides free access. Tier, hot, cold, and archive. The hot tier is by is the default. The hot tier means what? When are you going to access that blob? If you are going to access that blob quite frequently, it is considered as a hot tier. That means if that is that is that means what? You if you you store an image as a blob. In the blob storage. Now, how frequently you are going to access that image? That depends on the different types of tiers: hot tier, cool tier, archive. So, hot tier is the one which, by default, where you are going to use the data frequently. Cool tier. Where you say, for example, access the information within a period of one month. In a period of one month, so it is lower performance tier and incurs reduce the storage charges compared to the hot tier. See all these things. What you are doing here in Azure, everything, every storage information. Is chargeable. Every information is chargeable. The hot tier is more chargeable. Cool tier is less chargeable. That way. And then you have got what is called here is archive tier. Archive tier provides the lowest storage cost. So whatever data is there in the archive tier, 
that is basically stored externally that is basically stored externally offline so whatever say for example the data that means the images or videos or whatever you are not going to use over a period of time it is converted into an archive it is converted into an archive tier so when you want to access that part to retrieve the blob from the archive tier you must change the access tier to hot or cold and then you can access it so that means over a period of time let us assume just a hypothetical case that 30 days okay 30 days is your cool tier above 30 days is archive okay so if you want to access an image which is after the 30 days or after 2 months or 3 months that is to be converted into hot or cool tier and that is that blob will be rehydrated that means updated again and then after the rehydration updation is complete that is updation means converting from the archive tier to the hot or cold tier then we can access that blob so all these things are nothing but considering the way how the data will be So it is something like this. See, you have got to create an Azure storage account. Then you have to create a blob container where the different files can be stored. There, blob one. In a further form, you can store blob two and so on. So that is how hierarchy you can create of your blob data. So this has to be done. First thing is the thing has to be done manually. But then once you want go into the programming level, then it has to be accessible through programs. Like through a program you upload the images, through a program you access the images, through the program you delete the images. So everything has to be done through the programs because. you have got the apis available the blob apis are available so using the blob apis you can do the coding work here so that is what is blob storage then you have got what is called as azure data lake store generation 2 first it was generation 1 but now it has been generation 2 it combines azure data lake store generation 1 with blob storage for a large scale file storage and analytics enables the files and data level access control and compatible with large scale analytical systems So it is enabled in the Azure Storage account through a hierarchical namespace concept. The so file stream includes directories, files compatible with the large-scale data like Hadoop, Databricks, Azure Synapses. So again, that has to be done with the help of Azure Storage account. then we have got what is called as azure files now azure file concept is similar like the file system what we have on premise like how you create a folder inside the folder you create 
further sub folders and store it but that is locally on your machine that is locally on your machine but if you want to centralize that or make it globally then you have to use azure file system and then you can give the access rights to users who are going to use the files and so on Azure file is essential to way to create a cloud based networking sharing data like how we make it on premise here we you do it on the cloud like how for example you have used some products like what one drive hello we have used a product called one drive correct it is something like that So that is one drive, Microsoft One Drive, and here we have to explicitly create that thing. In Azure, we can share hundred TB of data in a single storage account. So either we can use the Azure file storage using the Azure portal. or you have got tools like az copy utility so you have got az copy utility commands available where you can upload the files manually and it has got two different types of tiers standard tier which uses the hard disk this hardware in a data center or premium tier which is solid state disk So it is normally, you know, like how on your machine you have got a disk and you have got SSD. So if you are going to use a disk, that means in Azure, is, then you have to use a standard tier. And if you are going to use SSD, then you have to use a premium tier. So this is related to. Azure file system. Then we have got what is called as Azure tables. One is what we discuss is what Azure blobs. Then we discuss what Azure file system, and then we have got Azure table. So Azure table. is a no sql storage solution that makes use of tables containing key view pair so azure table enables us to store what structured data all rows in the table must have a unique key which is made up of a partition key or a row key and when we modify the data time and time stamp is recorded so azure table storage doesn't have the concept of foreign key primary key relationship and all those things it is purely key value and whatever data is stored in azure tables it is denormalized so we discuss what is normalization where we in the entity which represents the tables the columns the primary key foreign key connectivity and all those things that is normalization but here it is denormalized where one row is having the entire data for a logical entity azure table basically stores the data into partitions partition means grouping of the data related to the rows based on a particular primary key or a partition key something that way and all partition share the same key which will be stored together so when we search the data we can include the partition key in our search criteria 
so this help us to do the searching faster read write operations much faster so this what is azure table storage we have got a partition key and a row key time state and the property and the data so whatever that is here it is grouped together with the help of the partition key so all the ones two and threes will be grouped together So now we'll just see a demo about this storage data. Whatever the storage data is there, we'll see the demo about the storage data, how it is to be used, how it is to be created, and all those. Okay. We are not. You ask a question or what you are saying? What? Yes. Hello. I think. Okay. Okay, then we'll see the demo about how to create a storage account and all. So again, using the Azure subscription, we open the portal. So we got. Then we have to create a resource, and we have to create a resource called as storage account. Create a resource or select a storage account from here. Or say from here also we can do that. So storage account. We say create. Then we give the subscription name. We give the group. Name storage account name we have to give there. Demo storage charge I give. Then the location is USA standard performance. Locally redundant area. So see here excess tiers. Do you see here excess tiers are cold? From here you can select that this storage account is going to have the stored in hot or cold environment. And subscription storage name we give we are given the region performance is local and if you for uh, you can enable higher people so leave this option and select networking to networking options select data protection and then in the recovery we select the data protection So see here you have got further options like you know enable of delete for blobs 
enable soft delete for container enable soft delete for file share that means what i mean see here retain the deleted blobs for 7 days we have this thing and if suppose by mistake somebody deletes that it is not completely removed from the system it will be remaining there for 7 days so like that depending on the requirement you can decel or select or make the changes then we say create so now the deployment will start Okay, so our storage account has been created. Now all the specifications are given here, which resources it is using, in which location it is created, what subscription it is using, and so on. so now here we want to store a blob blob can be anything a static file or image whatever so here in this demo they are selecting one file called product1.json so that is already your store portal So we go to the data storage and we go to the containers because if you see the diagram what we discuss we have got a storage account and then storage account will have containers containers for storing blobs containers for storing tables containers for storing files that way so in this container we have to create a container and give some name so i just say blob container and create so it has created the blob container now in this blob container we want to store something so we click on the container and we say upload so what file it is saying to upload
प्रोडक्ट वन जेसन मेरा है स्टोर डॉट फाइल आई से ब्राउज Product one dot JSON. I select this file which has been downloaded previously in my machine. I say okay. Okay, and now upload it. So this file is uploaded a blob. So like this, it can be anything. It can be a image also. Anything. So browse for first. I go to my images, images, images. Okay. So now, one image is uploaded. One. Text file, JSON file is uploaded. So that's how you upload something manually as a blob. Okay. We have stored it. Okay, so this is how basically you can upload images, any file you want. Yeah. So now if you want to access this thing it has created one url you see here demo storage url so this url we have to give in our application whatever application program is there and then you can access the data so that way how this data which is there will be available to anybody so it has got the whole thing here See. even for the json file it has created a url and that url we have to give basically and then we i mean it is giving us the error message Public access is not permitted. We have to give the public access and then it will allow us to see the data. Change. So this way you can upload files, you can upload anything. That is how the tables also is there. See, we can create tables also. In the Azure portal, select data storage and select tables. So now here, 
in our data storage see here tables add a table give a name my table and say okay So like this, we are in a table. Here we have got the table as a storage browser. Where we partition key, row key, so we have to add entity. Partition key, we say one and one. Add a property, a name. Say Tom, add a property. Age, data type, integer, the one thing. So here, if you see, we have got two records, key value pair. Partition key, row key, and then we give the data term, name and age. So that way how a table storage is basically there. Now you'll say that, what is this? What are we doing actually? See, actually here, what we are doing here is nothing but manually creating the storage area. Manually, we are creating the storage area. Accessing the storage area, one way is manually again, like how we did this, all the things manually. Logical speaking, it will not be annually the query work or access work. It will be done all programmatically. Understand, please. Here, programming we are not discussing. All things will be done programmatically. Programmatically, we have to create a partition key, row key, enter the name, enter the age, store the data, whatever it is. So, as we said previously, also we have got a set of APIs. All these blob APIs we have to use in our programming language, whichever it is, and then create a full fledged application. The first thing is what? Create the structure. That means the table storage or blob storage, the structures we create. Read data. It is to be done programmatically that way. Okay, clear. Okay.
Okay, so that is block storage. Now, relating to this uh, uh, link, link and all about the exercises, what I am showing you. You check it, check it out with uh, Archie when she comes in the evening. Hello. Okay. You can check these things whether the link are there or not, are shareable or not. You check it out with Archie in the evening. Once I complete the theory part and all. Okay. So let us see here what is the knowledge. What are the elements? Azure table storage key, partition key, and row key. What should you do in an existing store account in order to support a data lake for Azure Analytics? Upgrade the account to a hierarchical namespace and create a block container. So this was when we discussed just now, uh, generation two in that test. I, this was here, see. Generation two hierarchical namespaces. And which Azure store option should you use to create cloud-based network file share? Azure files. Okay. Any doubts? Anything? Anybody has got any doubts or any queries? Hello. No doubts, no queries. Let us proceed further. Now let us understand what is Cosmos DB, Azure Cosmos DB. Now see up till now, if you take up the things, whatever we have discussed, that is coming to relational concepts, relational databases, non-relational concepts, using blob, storage, tables, et cetera, et cetera. And now we have got something called as Azure Cosmos DB. What is Azure Cosmos DB? It is highly scalable cloud database service for no SQL database. SQL database means soft, Azure, SQL, and all those things. But for no SQL database, we have got Azure Cosmos DB, which is highly scalable data service for no SQL data. In fact, in this, you can store anything. You can store documents, graphs, key value pairs, column family rows, anything you can store in Cosmos DB. So let us see what is Azure Cosmos DB. So it supports multiple programming interfaces. So that it has got its own set of APIs, which can be used by different developers to create applications for storing the data in Cosmos DB database. It is using indexes and partition to provide fast read and write access. And it can scale up to massive volume of data. And each partition can grow up to 10 GB in size. And here the Cosmos DB indexes 
are automatically created and maintained by Azure. There's no extra administrative overhead on using Cosmos DB. So many of the Microsoft products, they themselves use Cosmos DB in applications involving Skype, Xbox, Microsoft 365, and so on. So that is basically to store any data anywhere in the cloud. So people use Cosmos DB. The Cosmos DB is highly suitable for different scenarios for gaming purpose, for web applications, for IoT and telematics, retail and marketing, anywhere it can be used. The Internet of Things, Cosmos DB can be used for gaming purpose, storing the information about related to the gaming purpose, Cosmos DB can be used for web applications, mobile applications, Cosmos DB can be used. So that much functionalities it can do and it can be used. So it is a basically fully managed and serverless distributed database for applicants of any size and scale. And it can be used for both relational as well as non-relational workloads. Developers can build and migrate their applications which they have been using on premise. Whether they were using Postgre, SQL, or they were using MongoDB, or they were using Apache Cassandra, Cosmos DB, you can upload all these things. So when you are creating a Cosmos DB instance, we have to specify which database engine you are going to use. Okay, it's not that anyhow, anywhere thing can be done. But when you're creating Cosmos DB instance, you have to specify whether your uh, database you're going to use is Postgre or MongoDB, Apache or SQL Server, so whatever it may be. That you have to give manually first time. So Azure Cosmos DB can be used for NoSQL also. So the data, whatever is there, that will be provided in which format? JSON format. Data, whatever is there, we will format it, which will be provided in JSON format. And using the SQL syntaxes, the JSON data can be visualized. Then MongoDB. Cosmos DB can be used for MongoDB also. So MongoDB client libraries or client APIs can be used for programming purpose. So see in this portal environment, we are just creating the what artifacts. We are just creating the concept. But use of the concept has to be done in the programming level, programming level, depending on the APIs. That way. Then MongoDB for Postgre. Normal storage also you can do using Cosmos DB. I mean, you can do anything. You can use Apache, Cassandra. You can use Gremlin. That is representing the data in a graph structure. Nodes are created. 
relationships are maintained that way so let us see here see here this is for example cosmos db you can store a document you can store graphs key values family stores any information can be stored in cosmos db so cosmos db is not for one basic thing i mean see like sql server if you use we can store sql server data na it is in sql server format tables rows and columns but cosmos db anything you can store so here cosmos db for no sql native api for cosmos db whatever data is there if it is stored in json format we fire the normal select statement select are from customer where customer id is so and so so you get the data in json format mongo db we say db dot products dot find I recall one twenty three. This is the MongoDB thing. So each language or each database on its own will have its own syntax. Postgres, table storage, key value pairs, Apache Cassandra, Gremlin where nodes are created. So this way, Cosmos DB is more in use as a database in Azure. So I'm not saying that a SQL Server is not in so SQL Server is separate. Oracle is separate. You have got uh, Oracle also on the cloud. SQL Server also on the cloud. Postgre also on the cloud. Everything is there available on the cloud. But this is like you know one tool. for the facing all the things the one database for handling all the things and each and this whole database has got the apis so using the apis we can access the information so let us see what is cosmos So here also same thing using Azure. We open the portal. So here we have to create a Cosmos DB. So we say Azure Cosmos DB. We say create Azure Cosmos DB for NoSQL, Azure Cosmos DB for Postgre, Azure Cosmos DB for MongoDB. You have got options here: table storage, Cassandra, and all those. So we Azure Cosmos DB for no SQL. So we use a group. we give account name
then we say location we select east usa okay so that is what we have to do we have to create the subscription to give the resource group we give account name locations provision apply select apply and limit account for put we select then create review mm -hmm. Deployment is in progress. So deployment is complete. We have got the specifications here, the group, the locations, and all those things. So now we go to the data storage or something like that.
so here we get data here where we can specify the tables or whatever we want to create so we have to go back and say new container yeah so we select in the data explorer we say launch quick start in the container we want to have some pre populated data let me go So we select quick start. We are creating a sample cleaner. So here, if you see, we are using some sample data from a sample data what we are having. So we'll see here, we have got sample database that is we have created. Inside that we have created a sample container. And inside the sample container, we have got items. So this items are in which format? JSON format. Items are in JSON format. See here. The records you click, you change. And then you can say select star from C. So when you say select star from C, the data what is there, it is visible to us. All the statements what I give here are basically fetching the data and displaying this thing. This way, how sample data is there, and using this select statement, you can query those records. And while creating this, we selected what the data to be displayed in JSON format. So we get this data. Here it is JSON format, but later, later on it will be done programmatically. We done programmatically, and in the application you will display the data. So you can write here store procedures also. You can write here triggers also. So that way this is like a normal database. Cosmos DB is like a normal database. This is how you create a Cosmos DB container and use that for displaying the information statically. So like here, see select. So we have given a query select star from C where container contains C dot name equal to helmet. I execute the query.
So I get records where the name is. Define here. Helmet. Wherever helmet is there, it will be displayed. So this way the query work is normally like how you it in SQL. So this is what is Cosmos DB. You have to create a container, and then get the data from whatever source you want or create static data and work on that basis. Okay. So let us further move on. I close this. So now we come next is if which Cosmos DB API should we use to store and query JSON documents in Azure? Cosmos DB for NoSQL. Which Cosmos DB API should you use to work with data in which entities and the relationships to one another are represented in a graph gremlin? And how can you enable global distributed users to work into their local replica of Cosmos DB? Create a Cosmos DB account, use the table API, uh, enable multiple region basic. Enable multiple region rights and add the regions where you want to use the users differently. Okay. And next, what we have? Okay. Now we take a look at some fundamentals of large scale analytics. One sec, one sec, what is happening here? Okay. See, up till now, we were just taking a look at certain things like relational database, non relational database, and what are the different things here. Now we take a look at the large scale analytics where data lakes and warehouses concepts are there. So, large scale analytics solution combines Conventional data warehousing to support business intelligence with data lake houses techniques that are used to integrate files and external resources. That means something like picking the data from multiple sources, picking up the data from multiple sources, converting them or transforming them into tables. Further, those tables are 
converted into the cubes and then the cubes are used for further designing the reports. The conventional data warehousing solution typically involves copying the data from transactional data stores into a relational database with a schema that's optimized for querying and building multiple multi-dimension models. The data lake house solutions, on the other hand, are used with large volumes of data in multiple formats, which is load or capture in real time screens and stored in data lakes from which distributed processing like a spark are used to process this data. So basically here, happens is like this. Whatever the data we have, we have to perform ETL. Extract, trans, and load. Or extract, load, and transform from different sources. So, this data which is there in your database, whether it is Oracle or SQL, whatever it may be, is further what converted into tables. And these tables are stored in what is called as a data lake storage or in a data warehouse. So these are the tables here. Then further, a data model is created. From the data storage, the data model is created like I said, what initially a cube. And this data model is for what purpose? Analytic purpose. So, for analysis purpose, these cubes are created, which has got what is called dimensions and facts. And all this data, whatever is there, is nothing but aggregation, sum, count, max, min, and all those things that way. There are millions of records and the summarized information of those kinds of records are put into this data model. And then this data model is used for visualization of the data, whether you prepare the graphs in whichever format or reports you design or dashboards you create. So mainly since it is a Microsoft product, it will be using what Power BI. So using Power BI, you do the data visualization. So that is what is large scale analytic processing. Either we use relational database or we use Apache Spark. So Apache Spark is nothing but an open source platform for scale and distributed data processing. And this multi-language data processing code is there. You are using Python or you're using Java or SQL, whatever you're using. This is what we discuss how to warehouse data ingestion and processing. Data from one or more transactional data source or files or real time streams is loaded into the data lake or a data warehouse for each extra 
transform and load. Then analytically data has been to be stored. So data stored for large scale analytical purpose is stored in relational data warehouses or file system called data lakes. And then from these data stored, cubes are created. Data cubes are created for visualization purpose. So always when large volume of data is there, I mean, this process has to be there. Now imagine where this can be used. Hello? Imagine where this concept can be used. See, applications where we have got what? For example, Amazon, Flipkart, you know, these things, these Amazon Flipkart has not just got one or two or hundred records. It has got mainly what? Millions of records. So there, these concepts are in use. There, these concepts are used. And see, these concepts we are discussing in Azure. Outside Azure environment also, these things are there, depending on whichever uh, cloud platform you're using. So it's not that only in Azure this is done. It can be done in any cloud platform or any other third-party product also available. So if there are some products, there can be done. But it becomes easier if everything is stored in what cloud concept. That So how data is ingested into an analytical data store from one or more sources. On Azure, large scale data is based, implemented, creating pipelines that creates the TL process. We can create and run pipelines using Azure Data Factory or similar pipeline like Azure Synapses Analytic or Microsoft Fiber. Pipelines consist of one or more activities. So, like how we have got a pipe. So we have to create a pipe using these tools where the activities can be multiple. Like for you know, fetch the data, convert the data into upper case, or whatever it may be the scenario. So as like your water pipe, where one end is what input, the other end is what output. So from one end, the data flows inside the pipe where multiple processing is done. And then in the output area, you get the output. So data warehouse, we saw what it is, is a relational database in which the data is stored in a schema that is optimized for data analytics rather than transactional work. The data from the transactional store is transformed into the schema in which numerical values are put in into fact tables, which are related to one or more dimension tables for aggregation purpose. So for example, a fact table may contain sales order data, which can be aggregated by customer-wise sales order, product-wise order, store-wise order, date-wise order, et cetera, et cetera. So that way, whatever the data is there in the data warehouse in the form of a cube is represented to represent the fact data and the dimension. Fact data, as I said, what they are the analysis data like some of the information, some count, max, main, et cetera, et cetera. Dimensions can be anything. It can be customer-wise, product-wise, order-wise, city-wise, month-wise. Any dimensions can be used. So the idea is what? Creating a data warehouse in a cube. The idea is that 
any way you can access the data in any format. So as I said initially, also cube is what from any side you look, you can see the information in a cube. From whichever side you look, you can get the information. So same way, it is there. The data. What is a data lake? Is a file stored usually on a distributed system for high performance. The technologies like Spark and Hadoop basically make use of this. The data lakes are great for supporting structures which are semi-structured or even unstructured data. So when you have a combination of mixed structure of data, we have to use data lakes. So that is see here. Data lakes are stored in a distributed file system and typically process using a product called Apache Spark. Metadata is used to define tables that provide a relational SQL interface on the file data, commonly used a data lake. So you have different products available called as pass data analytic services. So what is pass platform as a service? Pass is what platform as a service. So you have got Azure Synapse Analytics, unified solution for relational data warehouse and data lake analytics. Scalable processing and querying to multiple analytic runtime. So it is used for single, uniform, unified, large scale analytical solutions on Azure. Then you have got your Databricks. Azure based implementation of Databricks cloud analytics platform. platform. Spark and SQL data lake analytics. And you have got Azure HD Insight. Based on the implementation of Apache Big Data, we can use different products like Hadoop. Spark, Kafka, Tom, Edgebase, and so on. So basically, this concept, what we are discussing, is little higher at a high level. High level because we have to analyze the data. That way. Then we have got software as a service. Data analytics with a product called as Microfabric. So Microsoft Fabric has got data integration, data engineering, it uses data housing, data science, real-time analytics, business intelligence it is using, data activator. So it is one unified data foundation for processing data. Which Azure service can you use to create a pipeline for data injection and processing? Synapse Analytics and Azure Data. 
what must you define to implement a pipeline that reads data from Azure Blob Storage? A link service, a dedicated SQL pool, or Azure HD inside? A link service. Which open source distribute system processing in the Azure Synopsis analytics include? Apache Spark. Okay. Okay. So we'll take a 15 minutes break. Hello. And then at 3.45, we'll resume back.
ओके लेट एस कंटिन्यू so we were understanding what is data analytics where large scale data has to be analyzed and finally the reports has to be generated and in doing this we have to do data ingestion create a data store create a data model and then visualize the data so we have got different products available data warehouse data lake house and use them data bricks so we'll see here how microsoft fabric is used here for data analysis purpose so we have a demo on this so in this demo exercise we have to use microsoft fabric tool to create a lake house and query the data from the lake house So let us see how it has to be done. So first, we have to select Microsoft Fabric. So we have to sign in to this Microsoft Fabric tool. here if you see the menu power bi data factory real time processing synapse data engineering warehouses data science so using the rules we have to see how it can be done so where is the data warehouse So we have to create a warehouse. We have to create a warehouse first. Create a new workspace with a name of your choice. Selecting, we create a warehouse. By creating first a workspace. create a demo workspace is apply demo workspace is created this is the demo workspace what you see here demo workspace then we have to create a lake house we have to create a lake house we select data engineering from here
Creative Lake House, the name of your choice. We create a lake house. First, we create a workspace, then we select data engineering, and then we create a lake house. Name we say demo. Lake house. <laughs> you see your tables, files, they are empty currently. Now in this, we have to pull data, ingest the data. And for pushing the data, we have to create a data pipeline. We have to create a data pipeline. Get data and select new data pipeline let's say Now here we have to select sample data. Select choose the data source page. Select the retail data as sample database. From sample data, we select uh, retail data model from Is loading the data. So are you understanding now what we are doing? See, again, I'll repeat. See this diagram. If you see this diagram, we have got the data here, and from this, we are creating a Data store. So we selected the data tables, and from there we are selecting this part here. So in this demo, we are creating the lake house. We are copying the data into the lake house where we have got this data available. That is a predefined data we are using.
so we have got dimension dimension so see if you remember in that diagram we were talking about dimensions called city dimension called customer dimension called date so the dimensions are created and we are using those dimensions for further processing purpose So see a data warehouse, then lists, dimensions are there using the tables. This is ready made we are using. So that is what we are doing here. So see here stock item. All this data is there here. We copy the data, then the next item connect. So you say next. The connection is lake house, food folder, load. To a new table. So a new table will be created with these specifications, stock item, color, and so on. You say next. So from this dimension stock item, it will be converting the data into the lake house stock item. So we just save and run. So you see now a message came, succeeded. So our pipeline, which we had created, that is successfully executed. In the Lake House Explorer. So, say how you create pipelines 
and execute them. So when we had executed this pipeline, it shows us that the thing is running and you have got the pipeline activated. See here. This is the pipeline. This is just one simple pipeline we have created, but it can be created with multiple information, what may be the case. So that way, this Microsoft Fabric tool is used for creating this pipeline and exit pipeline. So this way how you have to use this tool called Microsoft Fabric Tool. Okay. So now what is let us see here. That we are seeing here. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. We have seen this. Now we have got fundamentals of real-time analytics. In real-time, how the analysis can be done? Real-time, how the analysis is done? Uh, see, in Microsoft Fabric software, this uh, ETL can be done, not in Azure. Okay, Rushil, in Microsoft Fabric software. So you have to have an account there and using that account, we can create this ETL transfer of data and generate the there. So let us understand what is time analytics. Now, real time analytics means what? In real time, the processing has to be done. That is what is meaning of real time analytics. Like for example, uh, you can take a share market. The share market information is real time given to you now somehow that is what is real time so in azure how it has to be done or what has to be used first we'll try to understand what is batch and stream processing in batch processing what happens multiple data records are collected together and then process at the end of the day or month or year or week, whatever it may be. So that is one single operation handled here. That is batch processing. Team processing is the data getting constantly monitored and processed in real time as and when the event occurs. So like, for example, you may have seen the share market. So you see this real time in the share market, uh, so many places, whether it is some website or somewhere on the share market, 
you go and you see on the share market building running score uh, running data is displayed there so that is real time so that real time is basically what concept is that when any particular event occurs when any event occurs the data is updated and when the data is updated it is reflected that is what is stream process so in batch processing what happens is a newly data which is arrived is collected and stored and then at one stretch the whole group is processed together as a batch and this can be done automatically also based on the time duration it can be like for example every in the evening every day 6 o'clock i want to process that data whatever the data has been collected from morning till evening till 6 o'clock i have to process that data or every weekend i have to process that bunch of data so that is what is batch processing some events has to be occurring there also time can be scheduled at what time of the day it should be and the event should be occurring and when it should be executed that way in stream processing as in when a new item is added it has to be processed so that adding of a new item is nothing but an event happening and when that event happens the data should be processed so that is the difference between batch processing and stream processing so there are different examples here that is stock market i told you online gaming then there can be real estate website that tracks the subset of data from mobile and makes real time property and recommendations of property to the visit based on the geolocation so these are different examples of streaming data so what is the general process streaming process an event generate some data so for example in our scenario we can take adding of a record that is an event so that is generated and that data is stored and that generated data is captured and processed stored in some folder or some table in the database whatever may be the scenario and then the event occurs whether it can be for time based event or it can be some other types of events which occurs like for example counting the number of sensor emissions per minute some event should happen so when that event occurs whatever the output comes out of that event that means the result of that has to be given to some file or some database or some visual environment for displaying that information so that way how the streaming process is basically happens here some event should occur for the data the generated data should be stored in some database or whatever it may be the scenario then the event data 
to be executed based on the time factor or some count factor and then the result should be streamed to an output device or screen or report or database which are it so that way how this processing of streaming thing happens here so these are the different products here azure stream annex spark structure streaming azure data explorer so all these things are in use here so azure stream analytics which is a platform as a service you can use to define the streaming jobs that injects the data from a streaming source apply to a query and write the results to an output then spark is a open source library that enable us to develop complex streaming solution and it can be using azure synapse analytics or azure database how uh, azure id insight and uh, or you can use azure data explorer high performance database and analytics service that is optimized for injecting and put the data which has to be given output so these are the different types of real time analytics in azure what are the sources for streaming data sources means the data sources means what the data of the sources the data can come from event hubs the data can come from iot hubs data lake and apache kafka from these different sources you can stream the data So you have got you have got event hubs, you have got IoT hubs, so you have got Internet of Things devices are available for that a hub is created. So when something happens in the device or whatever it may be the scenario, the data can be given. Or we can use the data lake, scalable storage device that are used in batch processing, or Apache Kafka, an open source data ingestion solution that is commonly used together with Apache Spark. So we can use Azure HD. And this is for stream processing, the output. The output can be given to the event hubs. The output can be given to Azure Blob Storage. Output can be given to a SQL database or Azure Synapse or Azure Databricks. Or the output can be given to the Microsoft BI, where the visualizations can be done. So from one source, one set of source, we take the inputs. And to another set of source, we give it as an output. So, what are the inputs comes up? Is processed and given as the output. That is what is the concept of stream processing. Okay. Then what we have? Now let us try to understand the concept of data visualization.
one second. One set, just wait. My God. Okay, am I audible now? Hello. Yes, yeah, things are destinations, the output destinations. Things are what? Output destinations. So your output destinations can be Anything depending on the application, whatever it is. So you can take the inputs from one hub and give it to the Power BI for visualization or whatever may be the scenario. Now let us understand data modeling. See, basically, data modeling and visualization is nothing but using Power BI. The business intelligence workloads are supported by large scale data analytics. So why the visualization is important? Why? See, basically, they are reports. The reports are used by the management. The reports are what used by the management. Now, the management is not concerned with the records. Understand that. Like suppose there are one lakh employees in the organization. The management is not concerned that how much salary I'm paying to one or uh, each and every employee. Management is not concerned with that. Management is just concerned that departmental wise, how much salary I'm paying. In each department, what salary I'm paying total. So if there are 10 departments, so just in the output, 10 record service given to. In the output, just 10 records are given that in IT department, this is the total employees. And this is the total salary paid to them. In finance department, in sales department, in HR department, the management is concerned with that. So to generate that data, we have to follow the entire process of what we are discussing. Converting the, getting the data, converting into the tables, creating the cubes, and then using those cubes for generating the reports, finally. So that's why visualization is important. So Microsoft uses Power BI. So it's a tool which can help us and the analysts to build interactive data visualization reports. So workflow has to be created for data visualization using the Power BI desktop. That is also another product of Microsoft, which can import the data, model the data, and display the data. So after we have to, after we have created the data models, we can publish them to a Power BI service, which is a cloud-based service in which reports can be published and interacted with the users. You can also consume this reports using dashboards, or using apps in the Power BI services, or you also use Power BI phone service also, phone apps also. So also on your mobile phones, 
the information can be displayed. What is data modeling here? The data modeling is means what? Let us say I have got one table. Simple, a simple example I'm giving you. I want the name of the employee and salary of the employee. That's all. Now, that data is already present in the database and the tables. But then we have to create a model based on our requirement. That means what? It is something like the requirement is that the names should be in uppercase. All the names should be in uppercase. The salary should have a currency symbol. Salary should have a currency symbol. So we are modeling the data. So on the raw data, what we have in the database table, we are modeling that into uppercase, the names and salary. So like that, as per the requirement, you can model whatever information you want. You can model whatever information you want. So that means I read the raw data, create a model, and then I get the output data that is in uppercase names and salary with the currency symbol. So I have modeled the data. That is what is modeling. So this is a simple example, but it can be anything. You have got in SQL or you have got in select query system, aggregate functions are there, aggregate methods are there. You can use those aggregate methods to model the data. Group by clauses are there in your select statements. Group by clauses are there. You can model the requirement using the group by clauses and model the data. So that is what is data modeling. The so models are based on related tables of data and define numeric values that we want to analyze, known as measure. And the entities by which we want to aggregate them are called as dimensions. So what is the measure and what is the dimension? Let us again come back to the same example to understand this. I have got one lakh of employees. The company has got one lakh employees. And I have got 10 departments. I have got 10 departments. I want departmental wise total salary and total employees. Departmental wise, I want what total salary and total of employees. So, in this example, a measure will be what? Salary total and count of employees. A measure will be what? Salary total and count of employees. And the entities by which we want to aggregate them is what? Department. Entities on which we want to aggregate is what? Departments. That is the dimension. So that means when I use this data, departmental wise, I get the result in each department. What is the total salary and what is the count of employees? So that thing has to be done with the help of modeling. So see another example they are giving. For example, a model might include a table containing numerical measures for sales such as revenue, quantity, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and dimensions called as products, customer, that way. So product wise total quantity I want customer wise we want to have a total of the quantity so dimensions and measures are like this so this will help us to aggregate whatever data we want and size the data basically whether it is month wise or week wise or year wise whichever way you want to So the model forms a multidimensional structure which is 
commonly referred to as a cube, in which at any point where the dimensions intersect, represents an aggregate measure for those dimensions. So I said what, when you use a cube, or you take a look at a cube, it is same from all the sides. Na? Same way here, a cube created from some data model should be such that from whichever angle you look at, you should be able to refresh the data. Okay. So that was what. The dimension tables represents the entities. Okay, tables there. Numerical data is called as facts. Another important thing here is that hierarchy. Now, basically, when you're doing some modeling or data, whatever it is, creating cubes and all those things, we have to create hierarchical reports. What we have to create is hierarchical reports. All we call is drill down reports. So that means what? For example, whatever data I have. Let us say I have some employees data only. All over India, my employees are there. I get, I have. Now I display the states. I display the states. When I click on the state, it should drill down to city names. It should drill down to city names. When I click on the city name, then it should show me the employee data. No, then it should show me the employee. So that way something has to be done. Either I click on the state, the city names are displayed. I click on the city name. I get all the employees from that city. That is drill down or drill up report. Thank you. For example. So that is the use of Power BI. So let us see what to do here in Power BI. Uh, we have some, uh, there is one Power BI. This is Power BI. So in Power BI, from where to import the data, that is that has to be done. They import the data from one more source. Then we have to define the data model, create a visualization report. And publish it to the BI services. Also schedule when this has to be refreshed. When the data has to be refreshed, we can display it in the web browser or we can display it in a mobile. So this is some data. Customer, product, this, and time. So it should be such that customer wise monthly sales figures I want. Customer wise monthly sales figures I want. Or product wise information I want. So that is where the modeling comes up and creation of 
cubes made up of dimensions and facts. From this data, what is generated is a cube. So from whichever angle you look, you get the data. Then whatever type of reports you want, you want to create the reports in this format or you want to create a report, bar chart, line chart, map, scatter plot, pie charts, any type of reports you can generate here. So which tool should be used? Which tool should be used to import data from multiple data sources and create a report? Power BI desktop. What should you define in your data model? Table, drill up or down analysis hierarchy. And which kind of visualization should you use to raise pass rates for multiple exams over time? Line chart. So that is. What is DP900 made up of? Now, all these things, whatever we have discussed from morning, are available on the web. And I think so, the link also has been given to you. Microsoft dot learn link has been given somewhere. Or what you can do is I go to Google. In Google, just type DP 900. So we get Microsoft certified data fundamentals. All these things, whatever I have discussed with you from morning, are available here. Explore data concepts, data roles and services, fundamentals of relational database, relational database services, storage for non relational database, Cosmo, all these things are given here. So we just have to. Here. This structure data, semi structure data, unstructured data. Okay. So DP stands for data processing that is there. 900 is not the version. See, Microsoft has some naming convention. All the 
fundamental concept, whether it is DP fundamentals or Azure fundamentals or AI fundamentals, they start with hyphen 900. AI 900, Z 900, DP 900, that way. Okay. So all the topics are categorized that way. So, do you have doubts or any thing here? I know it was, it was basically one sided because few people, I don't know why or what, cannot interact with me verbally. You have to type or anything. But as far as things are concerned, I hope you have understood the concept of. And your data processing. Okay, so any doubts, anything you want to ask me? Hello. So, hello, Archie. So we'll end up the session then. Just wait, wait. Just don't go away. I'll just find out Archie has to give you something or whatever. Archie. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, the session is nearly over now. So you, you have to. I was something then or whatever you said. Hmm. Yeah, okay, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for this session. Guys, I already shared feedback form. Please uh, fill this feedback form before leaving the session. Yeah.